Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're going to take a look at a bit of hardware that you may have seen uh, It's kind of a cameo in other videos, something I've had laying around for, for months now and have finally decided to do something with. So as we're going through this video, I'd like you guys to sound off in the comments about what you think I should do with this R86. S. So this is the GW R86S G3. It has an Intel Pentium Silver N6005 with a base clock of 2 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.3 gigahertz. It's built on the 10 nanometer process with four cores, th four threads, and a 10 watt. TDP. So let's talk a little bit about this. I've actually had this device for a while now. You may have seen it make some cameos in some other videos like my iPerf 3 video and a couple of others, I think. But uh, I've decided to finally do something with it. I'm not sure what. And I would actually like you guys to maybe put in the comment section down below what you think I should do with this. Uh, I should mention when I first got it, uh, it did have OpenWRT on it. It was meant to be uh, a firewall appliance, I think. But uh, it's got some other application uh, possibilities, I think. And I'd like to know what you guys think I should do with it. Um, we kind of talked about the processor and that sort of thing, uh, but now let's kind of look around the edges of this. Uh, across the top here, we've got uh, kind of a little intake area as well as a fan to keep the, that N6005 cool. Uh, there was also an option for this unit to have a, uh, an N5105, I believe, in it, um, but this one did come with the N6005 processor. Uh, if we flip over to this side, uh, I'm going to uh, try to remember to keep things in focus here. Uh, basically over here, uh, we've got a power and uh, LED indicator here for, for that power button. We've got a U uh, an HDMI 2.0 port there, which I appreciate it being full size. We've got a USB 3 port and a trans flash or micro HDMI slot down there right below it. Now, uh, I did mention that this is HDMI 2.0. This does have onboard Intel UHD graphics with a base clock of 450 megahertz and a boost clock of 900 megahertz. Uh, it does support 4K at 60. Uh, it's got DirectX 12 support, OpenGL 4.5 support, and because of the processor, it also has Intel Quick Sync Video, which might make this kind of an interesting idea for maybe a media server or something like that. So that's kind of what's going on on this side. Uh, if we flip over to the other side, uh, literally nothing there you'll notice that there are some screws missing. Uh, they're over here. I just took them out so we could take a look inside a little faster later. Of course, if we flip over to uh, the more exciting side here, uh, let's let's get our focus pulled in there and turn that around. So <clears throat> right here, 12 volt uh, barrel jack, that is 12 volts at four amps, so 48 watts that it can draw. Of course, this does, uh, that, that Jasper Lake processor, that 6005, does have a TDP of, of only 10 watts. So that's that's interesting there. Uh, we've got another USB 3 port over here. Uh, we've got um, three uh, Ethernet ports here. Those are two and a half gig Ethernet ports. So really dig that. And of course, the real highlight down here are those two SFP plus 10 gig ports. Uh, all of this is uh, run on an i225V network controller for uh, all five of those ports. Um, and if we flip over to this side, we've also got some Wi-Fi 6 antennas uh, for the Wi-Fi 6 AX201 uh, Wi-Fi connection that's available there as well. So uh, that's really all there is going on here. We don't have anything else on this other side, uh, so I'm not gonna pull focus. However, if we flip it over, I'm gonna go ahead and pull focus on that one if I can remember which way to go there. There we go. So here we've got uh, just kind of a nice little uh, almost hidden uh, bottom panel that will come off. We can already see that there is one screw missing. So I'm gonna pull this other one out and flip it over like so. Okay, so basically what we can see here is there is another fan that is to keep that network controller cool. Uh, these SFP ports tend to run pretty warm. That's pretty uh, industry standard from my experience, but there is some active cooling for the network stuff in there as well. Um, and this is an MVME M.2 drive at 2,280 millimeters. I think that's right. Um, I'm I'm an American and I'm not so good with the metric stuff, but this is a 2280 uh, NVMe uh, M.2 drive there from Silicon Power, but uh, this wasn't provided to me. I bought that. I will say this was this was provided to me. Uh, I'll put links in the description and whatnot, but um, but they don't have anything to say about this uh, this review or this video or this this whatever we want to call this video. Uh, but that's kind of all there is really going on on the outside. Uh, this M.2 drive right here is the only user serviceable thing on the entire device. Uh, even if we take out some of these screws here, and then we wanna be careful when we take this thing apart, when we split it in half, uh, because it is just held together with some wires. We've got a couple of ribbon cables, um, a little connection cable here for power. 
Um, and then there is an RTC battery uh, right down in here. Uh, but that's that's it. That's all that's holding this together are just some cables. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, uh, get into this side um, and take some additional screws out, pull all this out, and maybe replace the thermal paste if you ever needed to. But um, but that's all there is as far as the hardware itself is concerned. Okay, guys, that is the R86S. Um, like I said, I've had this sitting around for a while. Um, I have done things like I've thrown uh, windows on it and done some testing with that. Uh, I will say that putting windows or really any operating system on the eMMC storage is a bit slow. I actually did some tests uh, on with, with Crystal Disk Mark as far as speeds uh, with regards to both the EMMC chip that's on there as well as the uh, 100 or the 256 gig NVMe drive on there. And of course, as one would expect, the the uh, NVMe drive performed far, far better uh, than the, the EMMC chip on board. So I think that if you wanted to maybe use that EMMC storage as uh, kind of as storage rather than your operating system, uh, that's maybe what I would wanna do with it uh, just because I think you'll get better performance. Well, I know you'll get better for performance using the NVMe slot rather than the onboard EMMC. I also ran some tests with regards to the uh, 10 gig networking on there, and I was fully or mostly able to fully saturate uh, that full 10 gigs of bandwidth that's available on this device. Um, I did notice a couple of interesting things though. Uh, when I when I first got it, like I said earlier, it had OpenWRT on it, uh, and that was fine. But um, I didn't. I wanted to do more with it. I wanted to see what I could do with it. That sort of thing. So I, I threw Windows on it just because I could, I wanted to see how it would perform. Uh, I was able to get the, that, like I said, that full 10 gig saturation, but, or almost a full 10 gig saturation. The problem with that was that Windows didn't recognize any of the network drivers on this device. However, when I threw a Debian install on it, it's like, hey, which of these Intel NICs do you want to use? And it just recognized it straight out of the box with no issues. Uh, I have, however, since then, I managed to get all of the drivers for this device uh, exported and saved uh, just in case I ever want to throw something Windows related on it later. Um, but again, like I mentioned earlier, I would love to know from you guys in the comment section down below what you would do with this R86S or what you think I should do with this R86S. I'd love to hear all of that in the comment section down below. Uh, if you'd like to uh, check out more information about this device, of course, the description is down there as well. But I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.